Okay, at Love with Pat's Two Cents, Matthew chapter 6, <clears throat> verse 31 to 34. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take no thought. Let me read that again. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, there's a scripture a lot higher that says how uh, you know you can't add height to your stature by worrying. I'm putting that in layman's terms. So, knowing that God is your provider, knowing that God will do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Is the power working in you? Oh, is worrying eating you up alive? You know, the Bible says fear has torment. God is love. And perfect love casts out fear. When you know you're loved, you have no need to fear. You don't fear someone who loves you. You respect them. Oh, yeah. You don't play. But you're not oh, petrified. They're going to kick me out tomorrow. That's not how love operates. When you get a taste of real love, God's love, you understand that. And you don't worry so much about what he may or may not do because uh, he may be in a bad mood or get up on the wrong side of the bed. God is faithful. He knows you have needs. Do you hear me? Instead of sitting around trying to figure who you can beg, borrow, and steal from, ask God what you should do. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. When he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, listen, I do these videos all the time. There is no paycheck coming in. When I find my money getting slim, somebody somewhere blesses me. When my toilet messed up, and I'm putting my business out there, so some of y'all might be ashamed to say this. I'm proud to say, to brag on my father who takes good care of me, my father in heaven. Listen, when my toilet messed up, a lady gave me the money to buy the toilets. And it was enough money to pay somebody to install it. I am a widow. My husband is with the Lord. God says he is a husband. In Isaiah chapter 54, he is my husband. And I look to him to do what my money is not long enough to accomplish. Do you understand what I'm saying? God will position you to make sure that your needs get met. He will position you. You're not going to be left out in the cold. When my battery went out on me and I was on the freeway and I didn't have AAA, couldn't afford it. And I said, oh God, I need help. And one car came out from behind me, went on about the business. But the very next car pulled right up behind me, jumped out of his van and said, ma'am, do you want me to push you across the street? I didn't know this man. He pushed me across the street Look, lifted up my hood, told me I needed a new battery, took me to go get a new battery, 
brought me back to the car, lifted up the hood, put the battery in. Think about how God provides. He will provide through a total stranger and it will be a very safe experience. Put the battery in and did not want me to give him a dime for gas. Went on about his way. And within an hour and a half, I was home. I didn't sit out all night on the side of the road, panic-stricken, having hissy fits, wondering, well, what am I going to do? Oh, no. No. I just slightly breathed out my emotion. Father, I need help. Bam, right there. Instantly. Triple A couldn't have made it that fast. And I didn't have to pay for the help. My point to you is when God supplies, he supplies. And here's one of the reasons. When you put him first, when you put his ways first, you are obedient to the point of risking friendships, to the point of risking relationships, risking jobs. You do it God's way. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So you are about your father's business. You're serving him. You're witnessing for him. You're counseling. You're encouraging. You're singing. You're doing whatever. For God's sake, not to glorify yourself, to glorify God. Excuse me. God honors that kind of commitment. You don't walk around talking about how committed you are to God. Nobody else needs to know that. That's between you and God. Don't sound a trumpet. Don't don't look for accolades and applause. Just just do. Just do what you're doing and be who you are. Be all about the Lord. I guarantee you he will be all about you in every way, shape and form.